Hey there, welcome to our first Real Screaming Kayaks episode for summer 2017. It's late, late spring, almost early summer, and I've had a few months off due to many, many reasons. One of them being that my computer that edits the show blew up on me. Had a power surge, the motherboard's all blue, CPU, so it took me some weeks to get it going. And then there's been some other personal reasons. So we're back now with a vengeance and we've got some really cool stuff coming up this summer season. It's a cracker day. I'm here in Coromandel and looking forward to fishing and showing everybody what's on offer around this beautiful country we call God's Own, which is New Zealand. So on this episode, this time we have a blast from the past. A few years back in 2013, I went up to the Three Kings with some other kayak anglers and a couple of fishermen on a vessel, and we went out to the Three Kings. You're going to love it. Some of the fish we caught were just amazing. Also, we've got fishing techniques where I show you a new exciting lure that you can use from your kayak with existing gear. There's also some fish finder screenshots once again and you'll see some amazing images on my new Hummingbird Helix 9 Mega Imaging Gen 2. We also have in this episode a nice recipe that you can use to bake a whole fish. This is a real goodie, tastes delicious, you can use it with just about any fish and you'll be able to impress your friends with this one or your partner. All this and more coming up on Real Screaming Kayaks. Good fish, fish. And it's off! Screaming! Plans for the ultimate mothership offshore adventure trip to the Three Kings started in 2012. It involved months of preparation prior to our first trip which was canned due to bad weather. A new window of opportunity meant taking immediate action and a long drive to our departure location in the far north that was Hohora. The excitement and anticipation was very high for the four kayak fishers and two anglers on board for the trip. We were greeted at the Hohora Wharf by three crew and we soon had the multitudes of gear loaded up ready for our trip with our departure soon after and we were out through the Hohora heads with our first stop North Cape for a preliminary discussion before heading north to the Three Kings. Located 50 nautical miles north of Cape Reinga at the top of the North Island of New Zealand, the Three Kings is a wild place full of extreme conditions and big bad fish to boot. This makes kayak fishing in this type of location somewhat daunting but exciting at the same time and it requires a good vessel with two skippers who were willing to make this kind of thing happen and we found it in the vessel De Melza and skipper Tank. Tank has years of experience up at the Three Kings and this is what he had to say about our initial investigation on doing such a trip. Tank, what what did you initially think when you when we I first we we approached you about going out to the Three Kings kayak fishing? Well, initially I was just blown away because I've fished up there a hell of a lot. I know what it's like up there, and I thought uh, fishing kayaks up there you'd have to you'd have to be very lucky to get the weather right to do it and. Uh, I sort of said, oh, no way initially, and then, you know, I was worried about the currents and the, and the, the fish up there, there's pretty big fish, and you get hooked up, and not having a lot of experience with kayaks, I was a bit worried that you were going to get tipped out pretty easy and get all separated, 
So I was really skeptical for a start, but then I found out, you know, a bit more information about you guys that were coming, and you were sort of the, you know, the guys were probably a lot of experience. So I started to feel a bit there. Then I heard about all your safety gear and all your stuff that you know that you've been up to and doing. So. You know, so if we had the weather opportunity, we could do it. With the weather improving by the hour, we finally left our location at North Cape, steaming through the night north to the Kings. It was a long, anxious journey with little sleep, yet tiredness was soon overshadowed with the sight of the Three Kings. What an awesome place. Look at this country, it is magic. First day out kayak fishing at the Three Kings on the Demizella. Four kayakers on board and two fishermen and two skippers and one young fella. All the kayak anglers scrambled to get geared up and ready to get on the water. The steep rock formations dropped off into water that was very deep at its base. This was a kayak angler's paradise. Our first day started with a bit of a shakedown, giving us the opportunity to explore and check out the location before we got into the fishing. Most of the common water depths that we were fishing were around 80 to 100 metres, so this made mechanical jigging a really good option. Kingfish would be our main target species, and with plenty of experience using jigs to catch them, I spent time educating some of the others on this technique. With so many reefs and current lines in close around the islands, there were also plenty of kingfish hanging around them and it wasn't long before they fell victim to our jigs that we were offering them. With the average size of these kingfish at around 20 kilos, it was no easy feat to pull them in. And when you combined it with the conditions out here, despite being what they classified as quite calm, it was on average a metre chop, and when you were fishing the current lines, there was this huge troughs that you sat in while jigging for kingfish. It was challenging and extreme, but it was fun. When the kingfish weren't on the bite, we changed our focus to dropping soft baits down into deep water and the results were pretty unreal. The massive schools below offered us some new species with Teriki taking the soft baits readily, including my personal favourite pepper prawn jigging grub from Berkeley Gulp. To get down to these large schools of fish around the island, we use the captain's elevator rig. Terakihi weren't the only fish on offer, with good sized golden snapper also around swimming within those schools of fish. Although not a sport fish, both the terakihi and the golden snapper offered us a lot of fun on this light gear that we were using and the soft baits. Our focus soon went back to the kingfish though, and on the second day, we started getting into some better fish. 
one area in particular seemed to be holding some really good fish and after spending a bit of time there we were getting amongst them they were giving us one heck of a good scrap on the kayaks and some we lit one and some we lost after losing what can only be described as a better than average 20 kilo three kings fish I led one of the others back up to the area I had hooked up previously and he immediately hooked up on something even better here we have Stuart hooked up on what looks like a very nice fish indeed out at the Three Kings magic afternoon um, Stuart's into something really good it's been towing him around some fish do everything right to get caught at least this was the case for this kayak angler with a whopping kingfish coming up to the surface after about a 10 to 15 minute battle. Oh, look at this fish that um, Stuart's got here. It is a horse of a fish. It's a horse. Look at that, it's a monster. With this being the first time this kayak angler had targeted kingfish using jigs and me lending him the rod and reel that caught it, it was clear he was completely out of his depth when it came to bringing this fish on board and I would need to turn off the camera in order to give him a hand to do so. It weighed in at a whopping 34.6 kgs. The battles with these hard fighting pelagic species kept on going right into the afternoon till it was getting late. With the sun going down, finally I hooked into what would be the last fish for me of the day. This one certainly felt better than any of those previously caught. During the fight, it's amazing what runs through your mind and I was hoping, unlike the previous fish I caught, that this one would stick and the hook would stay attached to the fish. After a good 5 to 10 minute battle, the fish finally came up to the surface and I was stoked it would have been at least 25 kilos. Not the huge beast that I had been hoping for, but still a very satisfying fish. And my last kingfish for the trip. With the sun fast going down over the horizon, we headed back and jumped on board De Melza to anchor up for the night. So here we are, day three at the Three Kings and yet another beautiful day. It's pretty calm, the swell's still down and we're about to hit it again, it's first thing in the morning. Yeah, so um, let's see what today brings. Our last day was spent at a different part of the Three Kings group of islands and we would be targeting a different area in hope of some different species. With the weather due to pack in, we had limited time today and it started with a few golden snapper coming on board. Moving out further into deeper water, we were looking for the elusive bass or harpooker that are known to be in this area, but it wasn't to be and all we got was the odd tax man. All too soon, our time was up, and the call came over the radio from Demelza. Three Kings, I'll be back one day for another go at those dream fish. Have you ever wondered if vampires 
it's a dream location and I'm grateful for her letting us visit for what can only be the ultimate kayak fishing adventure. This episode features my Hummingbird Helix 9 Gen 2 Mega. This time on Understanding Fish Finders, we're going to look at some of the basic settings that you can change on your unit to get more from your images on screen. So the first thing we need to do before we look at setting up the sonar is changing the settings in our unit. So click the menu button twice and that'll bring you up into the main menu and scroll along to the setup and then scroll down to the user mode and what you'll find is it'll either be in normal or advanced. You need to switch that to advanced mode. That brings up a whole lot more options. After this go back up to the top and scroll along to the sonar menu. Scroll down and you'll come to the water type. Now it's quite important to set this properly and quite often they can be set for fresh so be sure to set it to the right one which should be salt water in our case but there's other options. So it's quite important to set that up every time you go out check that it's in the right mode and you'll have better readings on your unit. With sonar one of the biggest problems is everything seems to get joined together on screen and there's a way around bringing out these images and separating the individual fish. So how we can adjust this is by pushing the menu button once and scrolling down until we get to the sensitivity mode. Then we can adjust it back a little bit or increase whichever way we need to make the images more separated. You can see the immediate effect of doing this but also we can further adjust this by going to the contrast and then tweaking that to a degree. Small adjustments like these can make a big difference to your images. Sonar can have its limitations like this example that clearly shows what looks to be foul ground on the seafloor. This is where fish finders with down imaging can offer a better example of what you're looking at and switching over to the down imaging view clearly shows that foul ground is actually weed. The fish finders 1200 MHz chirp ability really adds a lot of detail to the images. Like sonar you also have the ability to play with different settings to enhance the image. Although with down imaging you have even more options. By using the contrast and sharpness options you can create even better detail within your images. For more information on hummingbird fish finders visit the website. Alright so this time on fishing techniques we're gonna cover something a bit new. You know being a lure fisherman I'm really really open to trying new things and you know we all know how effective soft baits and jigs and things like that are from the kayak. So these new lures that I'm talking about are called scoots. Now I've got one here. What they are is they're made on a little jig head. Now you'll be able to see that. They're a feather, silicon skirt and some of this fleck film material all combined. Now I found out about them through a page on Facebook and social media that Steve Harker runs. So I've been using a green type of lure. Now this one here is something I've used for few trips and I've managed to catch a lot of fish. You can see there there's not much left of it now but it still was catching fish. However I cut it off because today I want to show you how well these work for kayakers and they're a lot of fun. You know if you're into soft baiting already how you can um, adapt these is you can just use them on your soft bait rig. You know so I'm going to go through the techniques and show you how this style of fishing works and how successful it can be. It's a lot of fun. I get a huge amount of pleasure out of catching fish on replica lures like this. 
So it's not really ideal fishing conditions at the moment. Flat calm, we're in about 12 metres and it's um, pretty sunny, you know, in the sky. So really we should move out a bit deep. And, you know, the great thing about these lures is they do work really well um, during the day as well and in the shallows. Oh, I had a hit then. You know, this is the first cast I've had of the day um, on the scoop, and already I've had a hit. So, looking pretty promising. So, yeah, you can just cast these um, scoot lures out in front of your drift line and keep in touch with them. They get hit on the drop just like they do with soft baits. So, make sure you stay in touch and watch what's happening with it as it sinks down to the bottom. These things look amazing in the water and how we work them is very much like a soft bait. We just basically twitch them and flip the rod around and moving like you would a soft bait. That's what attracts the fish to um, strike the lure. So it's quite important to work them properly and give them a bit of action, you know, stay in touch with them. That's why the soft bait set is so perfect for the job. Oh yeah, and hooked up. I haven't really got my drag done up very tightly but um, this is my first fish on the scoop, second cast and um, we're in 12 metres and yeah it feels like not a bad fish, it had a bit of a go at it and didn't hook up, you know I wasn't ready for it and so I just gave it a little flick and it came back straight away and had a hit so you know as far as um, these things being effective I've found them to be amazing you know, worked them like a soft bait and yeah you know, people have questions about durability with them, but I've found them to last quite well. You know, I've had an entire afternoon's fishing out of one lure and managed to catch, you know, quite a number of fish, up to 30 one day in some uh, workups. So, so yeah, well worth a try. And the best thing about them is they're a lot of fun. I mean, the rewards from catching fish on this kind of lure is quite significant. So yeah, woohoo. Great fish by the feel of it. It's doing a bit of a run around for my first fish of the day. I'm certainly pretty happy about it. Go the scoot. They're just fun. They just add a whole new dimension to your fishing. If you're into soft baiting and lure fishing, then this will certainly be of interest to you. You know, heck of a lot of uh, fun and the challenge is great because you're using something that has no scent or anything like that at all and solely relies on its ability to fool the fish into eating it and these definitely do the business. For my first fish of the day I am certainly very very happy. You can see the scoot in the corner of its mouth. Great fish, you know this would be a 40-50 centimetre snapper. For the first fish of the day it's fantastic. And this is why I love these scoot lures. They're just awesome. There we go. Check that guy out for my first fish on a scoot lure. 12, 13 metres of water and bright sunny conditions, flat calm. I think the proof's in the pudding. Check that out. We're going to let this guy go. I'm all about putting the first one back for Tangaroa. If you look after the ocean, it will look after you. So... We'll let this guy go, great fish, there you go, look at that, beautiful, and off you go buddy, Woo! went back sweet as, lovely, there you go, check that guy out, beautiful looking fish, and there's that scoot in its mouth, number two, number four, there we go, stunner, happy as with that, great eating size, and number six, and that's number 10. Beauty. Look at that. Scoot, that's number 17. And the scoot's on again. I think this is number 16, isn't it? Or 17, I'm starting to lose count. Um, but yeah, just like heading back to the car now um, and back to my launch site. We're in nine meters of water and moving closer to the shore and beautiful hooked up on a nice fish, what feels like a, a reasonable fish. And so there you go, the scoots, awesome, awesome way of catching fish. If you're interested in getting hold of some or learning more, some people are making their own. Um, you can go on the NZ Lure Fishing page on Facebook.
So check out the page, NZ Lure Fishing, for the full rundown on scoots. Cooking your fish whole is a great option and will ensure that you get the maximum out of your catch. There are quite a few species that can be used for this. To prepare the fish, start by removing all the scales, the gut and gills, and then trim off any fins before finally washing it off with salt water. Next, grab a small mixing bowl and combine one teaspoon of crushed garlic, half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of lime or lemon juice, one teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of ground cumin, quarter of a teaspoon of chili powder, and one tablespoon of olive oil. Mix until you get a nice even consistency. Rub the marinade over the entire fish, including inside the gut cavity and the head. Once the marinade is rubbed all over the fish nice and evenly, cover with cling film and then place in the refrigerator for a minimum of half an hour. But I prefer overnight as this ensures the flavour gets right into the flesh. While the fish is marinating, we can get geared up to make our stuffing. For this you'll need 2 tablespoons of butter or olive oil, 2 tablespoons of finely chopped onion, quarter of a cup of chopped dried apricots, quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs, half a cup of chopped sultanas or raisins, half a cup of chopped walnuts, quarter of a teaspoon of salt, quarter of a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, quarter of a teaspoon of ground cardamom and quarter of a teaspoon of ground cloves. In a saucepan, heat the butter or oil, then cook the onion on a low heat until soft. Then add the fruits, nuts, breadcrumbs and spices and cook for three minutes, mixing well the entire time. Allow the stuffing to cool and then place the fish on a piece of foil large enough to enclose it. Fill the entire stomach and head cavity of the fish with the stuffing. Bring the foil around the fish and then fold the edges so that you make a parcel. Place in a preheated oven to 180 degrees Celsius and then bake for 25 to 35 minutes or until the flesh of the fish is opaque when tested with the point of a knife. The fish comes out juicy and tender with a beautiful aromatic flavour and is best served with rice and either lightly cooked green vegetables or a green salad. Win this awesome prize pack with Real Screaming Kayaks. There's some awesome items useful for both water sport and fishing enthusiasts like a range of fog dog batter and breadcrumb mixes. Keep the body warm and protected with shark skin and ridge line and increase the lifespan of your gear with Salt Away and Pro EPT Spray Lubricant. To be eligible to enter the draw to win this prize pack, you'll need to have subscribed to the New Zealand Kayak Fishing channel on YouTube, plus like and follow us on Facebook. Good luck, and the winner will be announced during every episode that ends with an even number. In this case, it'll be episode 12. Special thanks to our sponsors, Outdoor Sports New Zealand provide the Old Town Kayaks and Ocean Kayak that get us to the action. Humminbird provides the technology that finds the fish. Railblazer customises our kayaks. Sharkskin protects the body against the elements. Neptune assists with the free diving and Pelage captures the seafood. Jigstar rods fight the fish and zest jigs attract the fish. Thank you.